Hey guys, welcome back to Python 101. In this video, we're going to be looking at primitive types in Python, how to declare variables, and how these objects are stored in the memory. So every object in Python has its own unique type, whether it's a primitive type that we're going to be discussing right now, or a more advanced type like lists, sets, and dictionaries. And these objects actually are able to store other objects within them. And we're going to be discussing these type of objects in the future courses. For now, we're going to be focusing on these four uh, most basic primitive types. So the first one is type int, which is responsible for storing integer values. It can be um, any integer value, for instance, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and etc. Pretty straightforward. Then we have variables of type string, which is a keyword str for the type. And we've actually encou encountered this type of object in the previous video when we were printing out a message, hello world. And the way we implement that object is we use quotation marks. So the message is enclosed by the quotation marks and we write our message inside it. So it can be implemented with the use of a single quotation mark or a double quotation mark. The only difference is, for instance, if we want to use the double quotation mark in our string, then we would uh, enclose our message by the single quotation mark. And we would, for instance, print the double quotation mark over here. And it goes vice versa for the single quotation marks. For instance, we could print this over here. And that wouldn't change the syntax of the string. Then we have objects with decimals, which have type float. So basically any floating point number in Python is going to be of type float. It can be represented as a basic number like 3.55. We can also, instead of using a 5 as an integer, we can represent it as a float with 5.0. Or we can just ignore the whole number and say 0.312. So then we have objects of type boolean. This one's probably the easiest one to understand and the with the least scope, I would say, because this um, object, this type has only two possible values, which is true and false. So this is a logical type variable because we're going to be using it in conditional statements. For instance, if a equals b, then execute the code. Um, a equals B will either return a value of true or false. You can read more about conditional statements and conditional values on your own with a Google search. Or you can also access the documentation that I'm going to leave the link to in the description. As uh, you remember from the previous video, I said reference the documentation as much as you can. And this one specifically, this uh, section, uh, refers to built-in types in Python. You can look through it and get more information on all of that. So now we can actually go ahead and create our own variable. So let's go ahead and do that. So the way we declare a variable is by specifying the variable's name, followed by an equal sign, and then a value that we want to assign to that variable. So for instance, we want to say digit equals three. And here we declared a variable of type int. So um, a little bit about um, naming our variables. There's actually a Python variable naming convention. So the Python developers, the people who created the language, decided on how you should name your variables. And variables should typically be descriptive to what they represent because we're going to have multiples, like dozens of variables of different types and meanings. And we want to have descriptive names for each of them. For instance, if we have a variable that represents students grades, then we want to say something like student underscore grade. So instead of the space, we use an underscore here. And for variables, we have all lowercase letters. But for constants, for instance, we have something like pi, which would be all caps. But we rarely will define our own constants. Usually we use them from uh, pre-existing modules. So in this case, we're going to just use this variable. So for instance, student grade equals B. 
and it's going to be of type string. We can also say um, student um, student integer rep. Uh, so say student integer representation of their grade, and that would be, for instance, four. We can also say uh, class average grade, and that would be, for instance, 3.6 and another one all all students I'm sorry all students present equals false they're not all present so as you can see here we defined four different variables that represent different meaning and they all have different values and of different types so if we actually want to see what type these variables are, we can simply uh, print it out in the console like we did before uh, with a print function. And inside it, we're going to use a type function. And the argument for the type function is actually going to be our variable that we want to get the type of. So let's actually copy paste this for all these and see what we get. So the first one is going to be student grade then student integer representation. This could have a better name. This this is more of a, a Java uh, naming convention. Then we're going to paste all these in here. So let's go ahead and save and run this. Oh, yeah. And uh, this obviously is invalid syntax. So let's um, actually comment this out. So what we can do is we can comment out a whole block of code. Uh, what this will do is just sometimes people want to uh, comment stuff out just um, for their own reference to read. And everything in this block of code is going to be ignored by the compiler. So we will only run the code starting over here. All right, so let's go ahead, save and run this. And we're getting an error. So student integer rep is not defined, of course, because we changed this. So let's go ahead and run now. And as you can see, our first um, variable is of type string, then int, float, and boolean. So that's it for today's short video. Today we just covered how to declare variables of different types and check their type. And the next video is going to be more interesting because we're going to cover memory management in Python, how all these objects are stored in the memory. We're going to discuss what stack and a heap is in the memory, what a reference is and what an object is, reference count, garbage collection, and all that. So I hope to see you next time and good luck.